trapped above the clouds with multiple system failures. Air India Flight 101 While flying in the sky, Boeing 777 as AI-101, Delhi JFK non-stop's instrument landing system, ILS, failed on its final approach to New York's JFK airport. They spent about a half hour in the air, working with JFK ATC to find an airfield in New York City or a nearby city with decent visibility. They were also running low on petrol. Over 370 people got stranded above the sky, on the verge of death. So what happened next? Is it possible for them to land safely? Stay tuned to find out more about Air India Flight 101, trapped above the clouds with multiple system failures. Hello everyone, welcome to Mayday, your aviation-friendly channel where we walk you through high-profile air disasters to uncover how and why they happened. So subscribe now to climb into the cockpit and press the bell icon for an experience you won't soon forget. With that being said, let's take off. On the 17th anniversary of 9-11, it was early morning, a somber reminder of the atrocities of terrorism. On September 11th, as most New Yorkers were getting set to start their daily routines, a long-range Boeing 777-300 carrying 370 people approached John F. Kennedy International Airport, JFK. The Air India plane, the world's biggest twin jet, was on the final leg of a 15-hour non-stop journey through Pakistan, Afghanistan, Russia, Finland, Greenland, and Canada via the polar route. Two pilots and two co-pilots were at the controls. It includes a seasoned Air India pilot who had to use all of his talents to prevent a repeat of the 9-11 disaster. The cockpit exploded with sounds and lights of various colors as the Boeing aircraft approached the JFK at a distance of around 14 miles in what had been a routine trip. The Air India 101 was immediately determined to be experiencing several system failures by the pilots. The ensuing 38 minutes were one of the most harrowing in Indian aviation history as human talents were called upon to overcome machine failure. The jet eventually landed safely, but only after it got redirected to Newark, Newark Liberty International Airport in New Jersey. This type of failure is extremely uncommon. However, it was fortunate that Air India had an experienced captain on board to handle the situation. Captain Mohan Ranganathan, a former airline instructor pilot and safety specialist, remarked, a raw hand wouldn't be able to handle this. According to a senior Air India official who spoke to Mint on the condition of anonymity, the 777-300 has been declared suitable to travel to New York by engineers. We can only hypothesize on what may have caused this type of multi-instrument failure. We're looking into it and will take appropriate measures, the official stated. The event went under the investigation of the National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, an independent US government accident investigative body. The National Transportation Safety Board did not respond to any email requesting comment. The sky over New York was cloudy, with a cloud ceiling of only 200 feet. It would not have been an issue for any other airplane whose systems were in excellent working order. Captain Sushant Singh and Captain Diaz Bhatti, the second pair of pilots, were in the cockpit with Commander Rustam Palia and First Officer Captain Vikas. The four pilots, all of whom were from Mumbai, were obliged to be present in the cockpit throughout the landing. While performing an approach towards the airport, Captain Palia and his crew discovered that the Boeing's instrument landing system, ILS, had failed while they were approximately three to four minutes from the airport. The TCAS, Traffic Collision Avoidance System, which was supposed to prevent mid-air crashes, has also failed. When pilots could not make visual contact with the runway, such as on a cloudy or foggy day, the ILS assists them in landing their plane. ILS got two sections. The localizer aids in guiding the plane to the runway's centerline once it has locked onto it, while the glide slope takes it down a decent profile. Captain Palia and his crew recognized the localizer was not captured by the aircraft's systems. When the air traffic controller, ATC at JFK, allowed AI-101 to proceed on to the localizer for the landing approach. As we later heard the pilot's conversation, Captain Palia had said, We were going blind. The pilots discovered that Boeing's landing system had failed when approaching JFK about three to four minutes from the airport, because the cloud base was close to 200 feet. Captain Palia and crew couldn't use a non-precision approach or a landing that didn't employ electronic glide path guidance because a significantly higher cloud base of 650 to 700 feet was required. 
a non-precision approach utilizing lateral navigation (LNAV) and vertical navigation (VNAV), which uses data from the GPS (Global Positioning System) to determine the location of the aircraft, was not an option. The crew also spotted flash signals concerning a malfunction with the landing gear, which turned out to be a false alarm. As AI-101 proceeded on its approach and studied, the crew elected to fly around JFK because landing with a non-functioning ILS and a cloud ceiling of 200 feet was too dangerous. In the meantime, we were attempting to figure out other airports with a better cloud base for landing. Captain Palia recalled, the ATC wanted us to conduct an auto landing using ILS, which we replied was not a possibility. There was also a fuel issue. The pilots had to confront a new problem, rapidly decreasing gasoline, followed performing a go-around which burned as much as 2 tons of gasoline. The jet was left with roughly 7.3 tons of fuel, or one hour of fuel, after its non-stop journey from New Delhi. A plane that flies at a lower altitude uses more fuel than one that flies at a higher altitude. The pilots were frequently requesting weather updates from JFK ATC to choose a nearby alternative airfield for landing. There were suggestions for a few other airports with a greater cloud base, but these had to get ruled out due to insufficient fuel reserves. After such a lengthy trip, we only had enough fuel to get to our major alternate, New York, and our secondary alternate, New York Stewart International Airport, and a half hour of holding fuel. Captain Palia shared his thoughts. Meanwhile, AI-101 got split from other traffic, and the pilots began working on the problem immediately. To make an approach utilizing LNAV and VNAV, we needed an airport with a cloud base of above 600 feet. When we figured out what to do, ATC informed us that there was nothing in the area with a cloud base greater than 600 feet, Captain Palia revealed. While the pilots debated the best course of action, Captain Palia considered alternative possibilities, such as employing RNAV, a GPS-based system that allows a pilot to navigate his aircraft to a landing in limited visibility. With low fuel and tiredness setting in, the pilots didn't have time to look through the charts. Other ways crossed my thoughts, Captain Palia said, but it didn't come up in our conversations since the tension was too great and we were already tired after flying for 15 hours. The pilots resumed their search for the latest weather report from the ATC, who advised them that the cloud ceiling at Newark Airport, roughly 51.5 kilometers from JFK, had climbed to 400 feet from 200 feet earlier. The pilots chose to go with the second option. Ideally, the cloud ceiling would have been at 700 feet. But 400 feet was better than 200 feet because we could see things and position our planes to the runway, Captain Vikas said. They did, however, have the issue of aligning the plane with the runway sensor at Newark because the 777-300 weighs more than 158 tons when empty. It must get properly adjusted or it will overshoot the runway. According to Captain Palia, the failure of three radar altimeters at the same time is unheard of. The only information passengers and crew received was the plane would get diverted to Newark due to a technical issue. As pilots said, they were not following the course and were flying too high. As a result, they adopted a technique known as vertical speed to boost the rate of falls. Finally, it was time for the final descent. As we began to fall faster, our pace increased. As the plane lowered its nose, the speed had to get reduced, Palia the captain said. It is when the commander decided to switch from autopilot to manual mode to slow down the plane's descent and land it. However, you can't just drop the plane's nose down when you can't see anything. You had to softly approach the route, and the aircraft had to slow down so that the flaps could be used, which is exactly what happened. Captain Palia expressed his thoughts. The cloud base at Newark was 400 feet overcast and 200 feet broken when the pilots were descending, allowing them to see through the cloud at 200 feet. The cloud cover was dissipating, but it was not completely gone. The precision approach indicator on the aircraft, which shows two white lights and two red lights if the aircraft is on the right route, was all white, indicating that the aircraft was still too high on the course. While the plane was descending with its nose down, the pilots had to swiftly align the plane. The passengers and cabin crew had no idea what was going on in the cockpit. The only information they had was that the plane would get redirected. While the radio altimeter was broken, the aircraft system had auto callouts that notified us how far away we were from the ground. 100 feet, 50 feet, 40 feet, 30 feet, 20 feet, 10 feet, until we touched down. Captain Lucas said the pilots were seated in the cockpit, which was approximately two stories high. Captain Palia claimed, I could see the runway, so I used my judgment and landed the plane. 
As soon as we spotted the runway, we seized control of the plane and landed safely. When we landed, we were aligned to the center, Captain Vikas continued. It began to rain in Newark around 15 to 20 minutes after the 777-300's engine was turned off. Multiple instrument failures, like those witnessed on September the 11th, are unusual. If Air India wants to be prudent, it should conduct a comprehensive investigation into this situation. Even in training sims, none of the pilots on board AI-101 had ever encountered a situation like this. An aviation specialist, who did not want to be named, has said that Air India should conduct a comprehensive investigation into this incident. The four Air India pilots performed an outstanding job of landing the jet in such a difficult scenario. However, we still don't know what caused the many instrument failures, he said. So, did the story give you chills? How could you react if you were on this plane? Tell us in the comments. That wraps up our video for today. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell icon to never miss breathtaking aviation stories. See you soon. Until then, peace.